Right, so I'm having a bit of deja vu because a few weeks ago I was in Valencia for the Street Twin launch. I'm in Spain again now. I've also got a Triumph, except this time it's completely different. It's the Speed Triple. Now, obviously the Street Twin, completely different bike, chilled jacket, ripped jeans, which I've definitely got a bit of slagging off for, whereas this is going to be a bit more leery. Got the leathers on, we're out on the roads, and then we're out on the circuit this afternoon to test this bike. Like the Street Twin, Triumph haven't really told us much about this machine, so we know it's got 104 new changes to the engine. We know there's some styling tweaks, there's new colours, so they've changed the headlights again. The rear tailpiece has been changed, so it's pretty much straight off the Daytona 675R. And what they've also done is released an S model and an R model, so we're going to be riding the R model today. So what do you get on this R model over the S model? It's the usual goodies really. Olin suspension, both models now come with the Brembo monoblock brakes, whereas before if you wanted those brakes you had to get the R model. You also get carbon fibre and there's also some more goodies that we'll be running through later. Now we've ridden this bike for about an hour this morning in the Spanish mountains, first impressions are really good. Obviously it's not a massive update of the old bike but you can definitely feel some changes but it's got all those ingredients that make the Speed Triple such a good bike which is great handling, lovely balance, it's a bit, it's a bit of a hooligan you know nice short gearing, nice punchy engine and the fueling is absolutely immaculate which just makes it a pleasure to ride even if you're making small tweaks mid corner. Now back out in the mountains, a few miles of riding and then we're going to be heading to Calafat Circuit this afternoon because this bike's laden with some different riding modes one of which is a track mode. just come back from my first session around Califat Circuit. Now usually when you're doing a bit of road riding in the morning and then track sessions in the afternoon, you go out on circuit and the bike can feel a bit soft and you've got to come back in, dial in a load of preload just to stiffen the bike up so it can track around the corners properly. With this bike, I've only been out for the first session so maybe we're just going too slowly but it feels perfect around there so far. Really composed, as I said earlier, the fueling's immaculate so it's really precise. We've got two more sessions, I think 20 minutes and then another 20 minute session. Try and uh, go a bit faster this time, maybe pull some wheelies because there's not too many marshals around this circuit. But so far, the bike's held up really well on both the road and the track. Califat is really twisty pretty nasty circuit to be honest, right after a hairpin in the middle of the circuit there's a sort of left-hander then right-hander chicane downhill off camber, it's gross and the uh, slipper assist clutch on the bike copes with it really nicely, the brakes are powerful, they haven't been fading throughout the circuit, Jablo Super Corsa Pirelli tyres, what more can you say, there's nothing really stickier out there apart from full-on slicks. Now come out of the presentation at lunchtime and they've gone through a lot more of the changes so before, all we knew about the engine was that there were 104 changes to it. We knew it made a bit more power, a bit more torque, a bit more refined, they were saying, but we didn't know anything. What we've now received from then is, is the press pack and a, a big presentation and found out what those changes are. So there's a new piston, there's a new crankshaft, there's a new combustion chamber design, new intake ports, new fueling system, new ECU, there's new throttle bodies, there's a new ride-by-wire throttle, which is why you can get riding modes on this bike, because obviously it all links in through to the ECU and the traction control system. Now, what they're telling us is it makes 138 horsepower, which is not that much more than the old bike, but it's 5% up on torque throughout the mid-range. So there's definitely a bit more grunt there. But what is most noticeable over the old bike is actually not really that power, it's, it's the refinement of it. The fueling is absolutely immaculate on the bike. And when you're taking it around these tight, twisty corners when you're in first or second gear and the throttle can be really snatchy, on this bike, it's just superb. It's really easy to modulate it, it's precise, it's controlled, and you can get exactly the amount of power that you want in. So I think Triumph probably would have slapped me around the face if they'd heard me say that this wasn't a major update to the bike earlier on, because obviously it's not just the engine that they've changed, they've also changed the styling. So there's that new Daytona 675 inspired tail unit, there's a new bezel around the front headlights, there's also LED running lights on them, the fly screen is different, there's an air intake duct that kind of fits right in the middle of it. There's also just different styling throughout the center of the bike near the radiator shroud 
clouds. The new radiator is basically, because the engine is more efficient, they can use a smaller radiator, it means that front profile is a lot narrower. Now the old bike used to have a perfect 50-50 bias weight distribution just for that nice handling. What they've done now is they've kind of kept that, they've tweaked it slightly, but there's a different riding position, the seat's slightly different. So what it does is it slopes the body forward. So they're using the rider's body position to place a bit more weight over the front end for better handling, better performance on circuit and on the road, just for a bit more feel at the front end. So another update that they've made to the bike is through the exhaust system. Basically it's still that twin high up thing that some people, it's a bit love or hate really, but they've saved almost over half a kilo from the whole system. Now obviously Triumph does some accessories with Arrow, so you can get two different exhaust systems. One's just slip-ons and they both fit on either side. It's basically the same unit but a nice titanium system. The other one is a full system from Arrow. It's called a low boy. It's a three into one system and it's low slung so it keeps that weight down and it takes something like 6.1 kilos off the weight of the exhaust system. Another change that they've made is the dash cluster. It's entirely different and they've also added those five rider modes. So what you get is road, sport, rain, track and then a rider configurable mode where you can basically adapt anything. Now the difference between those modes, every single one makes the full 138 horsepower. The only difference is the fueling and the power map. So obviously rain mode is slightly softer, traction control settings higher, ABS is on. So those are the main updates and upgrades to the 2016 Speed Triple R. Got one more session out of Califat. It's just started raining. What do they say about not going out on your last session? Come back from session three and, and like session two the bike's just proven itself that it's completely capable on circuit if there are a few things that i would like to see on the bike quick shifter would be nice and also the pegs ground out big time on the circuit compared to bikes like the monster 1200r this thing comes in at 11 and a half grand the r model anyway that's a few thousand pounds cheaper than the monster 1200r and on track it's just as capable, you know, it's got these Brembo brakes, strong engine, great Olin suspension. The only thing that it's not got compared to that Monster 1200R is the power output, because that thing puts out almost 170 horsepower. Usually on launches, when you ride these new bikes, one thing in particular stands out about the bike. You know, it's either disgustingly quick or it handles exceptionally well. With the Speed Triple, it's come across as just an all-round really good package, and that's kind of what it excels at. That is good at everything, you know, it's got a really strong engine, the suspension is adjustable, it's really well balanced, the brakes are strong, the whole bike's finished really nicely, LED indicators, fresh styling. As a road bike, perfect, you know, really comfortable. The fly screen actually does a really good job on the motorway, even at sort of 100 mile an hour plus. As an all-round package, I think the Speed Triple R is a really good offering. Great on the road, great on the circuit, comfortable, good looking. If you can't quite stretch to 11 and a half thousand pounds, then you've got the S model at 10,200. And so it really comes down to whether you like the styling of the R with those red uh, radiator shrouds and the different styling and the, you know, the small trinkets that come with the R model. Also, it's British, so it gets my vote.